Hello everyone, welcome to take two of homebrew update for this week. That's right, I forgot to take off the mute button on my mic so that way no audio got recorded for this video. Lovely! We have a lot of stuff to talk about, starting from the Nintendo Switch to the PlayStation 4 and a popular handheld console that came out back in 2009. But more on that later. We have custom firmwares and homebrew loaders and other things to talk about. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting off on the Nintendo Switch, we have a PSA. The reason is because we have this PSA is because Nintendo has found a way to block web applets if you're not on the newest firmware. It sucks. It really does because you can't access the homebrew launcher. For the people who are not on the newest firmware and if you haven't been on the internet in the past month or so, you should be good. But for the people who have and you've noticed that you've gotten a update nag that you just can't get rid of even through the recovery mode thing, well I'm sorry guys, that is what I'm talking about. You are not able to get rid of this thing easily at all. You do have to install Linux and install a patch to get to it. but. It's not easy. It sucks. So, guys, I'm sure that in the future we will have an easier way to get rid of this little nag thing, and I'm sure even with Atmosphere coming out, you won't even need to worry about it, but trying to hold off and not to do anything until we find a way around this stupid little nag. We were hit with some awesome news about the Atmosphere custom firmware for the Nintendo Switch earlier this week. Skyries M has posted a video on YouTube showing that he has booted Atmosphere on 5.0.1 and it booted it into the home menu of the Nintendo Switch. This is awesome news. That means he is working steadily and hard getting this thing ready for the release date in some time of summer of this year. There have been a few homebrew mods going around on the Nintendo Switch and they all kind of base around one mod called Hikate. I'm not really too sure who actually created this mod and where the name came from, but I do know what it does. It lets you essentially run the homebrew launcher on 4.x firmware and also the recently addition of 5.x firmware as well. This is awesome news. Whoever is on whatever firmware, you should have access to the homebrew launcher now. I can't remember if Hikate actually uses the internet connection or if you need to go through the RCM mode to run Hikate or not. But either way, I will leave a link in the description below to where you can download it and try it out for yourself. While you're trying to load up the Hikate mod, there is also another popular mod through the same mod Hikate that lets you dump the NAND of your Switch. Now this is a full NAND dump, so you're able to dump it and then save it for future use when you are able to actually upload it back to your system or re-inject it back to your system, whatever words you want to use. Now currently you cannot actually put it back onto your system if something goes wrong with your system because we do not have a way to re-inject it yet, but in the future that NAND dump should be handy if something does go wrong. I would also like to give a quick mention to a popular 3DS save manager called Checkpoint by Berdano Guendarno. I don't know his name. I'm going to put it somewhere in the description below. Anyway, he has decided to actually port his popular Checkpoint save manager over to the Nintendo Switch. I'm pretty sure it's still in the works, it's not fully functional, but sooner or later you'll be able to use the save manager to get any save you want, or if you want you can back up your Mario Kart 8 Deluxe save file and open it up with Mega Muse save editor. Yes, there's already a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe save editor, and guys, it's really cool. I highly suggest you check it out. Also, happy cheating with all you people who like to use save editors. Just alone, that is a lot on the Nintendo Switch, but we are not done with the Nintendo yet. We've got a huge announcement for a popular handheld console that came out in 2009 called the Nintendo DSi. We finally have a very first custom firmware on the Nintendo DSi called Haya CFW. What this custom firmware lets you do is install custom splash screens, lets you run your own DSiWare, as well as imports from, you know, different countries like Japan, which is awesome. This custom firmware is readily available right now and there's even a guide you can follow to install it onto your DSi. So if any of you have a DSi, unlike me, and you want to add a custom firmware to it, you can just follow the guide and you'll be on your way. The guide will be in the description below. Now that we're done with Nintendo, let's talk about the PlayStation 4, the only console we have today for Sony. We have a huge announcement from the popular developer SpectreDev. He has tweeted that he has a exploit on 
5, but not only is it just a regular exploit, it is a kernel exploit, so it has full control over the system. And he even says he will be releasing it with tools, so that way you can run the homebrew and such on your console. This is awesome news because anyone who is above, you know, 5.55 or also on 5.05, you will now have the availability to run homebrew on your console. Also know that any console right now that you buy in the US will have 5.05 firmware. So you will be able to hack it right out the box. That is awesome news. Currently, there has been one person over in Japan who has found a 5.07 console brand new out the box. So guys, I would recommend you get a PS4 as soon as you can before those consoles be shipped over to the US. Another developer who I will not try and announce because it is a weird name, he has been popularized in the PSP scene as well as the PS3 scene and now he's on the PS4 scene and he tweeted saying that he has a PS4 5.53 kernel exploit. Now this kernel exploit will not be released anytime soon since it is the most current firmware but that just gives us promise that we can have a kernel exploit on the newest firmware in the future or on more firmwares in the future. Next but not least, we have a small little quirk on a popular remaster of a game, Rappa the Rappa. This popular music game is actually running on a PSP emulator on the PS4, just with higher graphics. People have actually gone into the depths of the game and found out that the PSP ISO is able to be switched out with another PSP ISO and it can run just fine. Now, the games that work currently are hit and miss, but I'm sure in the future people will find out the limitations to this and make it so that all games will be able to run. I would love to see Hatsune Miku Project Diva running on my PS4, even though, you know, I can play on my PS Vita or PSP or PS TV. I would like to have it on the PS4 as well. And with that guys, that is all the homebrew news I have for you today. I know it was a lot, so if you forgot about any of it, there is all the links to everything I talked about in the description below. Take a look at it. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any questions about anything else, also feel free to ask. I will try to answer it to the best of my ability. And guys, with that, don't forget to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and that little bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. With that, guys, I shall see you all next video.